Welcome to the Happy Bones, Happy Life podcast. I'm Margie Bissinger, a physical therapist and integrative health coach, and I am your host and guide on our journey to discover the keys to stronger bones, more happiness, and the secrets to live your best life ever. From nutrition to stress, from exercise to happiness, you will gain revolutionary insights from our leading experts. It is time for you to discover the health and happiness you deserve. Hey, Margie here. Did you know that you can improve your bones and overall health with your thoughts and belief? Well, our guest today, Dr. Terry Lynch, is going to tell us all about this. Dr. Lynch is the author of Stressful Guide to Emo Trance. She's a physical therapist, international speaker, energist, and trainer whose main goal is exploring techniques and ideas that empower others towards self-healing and improved performance skills. She is a total motion release physical therapist and the owner of Healing to Wellness, LLC. She incorporates energy work into her practice, including EFT, emotional freedom techniques, Emotrance, Reiki, and others to provide a unique experience for her clients as they move towards healing and or use the gifts they have been given to the fullest extent. She is the creator of the Inner Awareness Method. And in today's talk, Terry goes over how our thoughts and beliefs can really make a big difference in our physical being. And she goes over some great practices with us. And we even go through one that you can take home, put into your life, and I think it could have a real positive impact. So stay tuned. Welcome, Terry. I am so excited to have you here on the podcast today. I'm just so glad I met you at the physical therapy course. And I think it was no coincidence that we, we found each other. And once I heard what you were doing, I just said, you have to come on the podcast and share this really fabulous information. So yes, I'm so you. happy to have you here today. And thank, thank you for being you so here. Much. That's great, Margie. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it was really, really fun to meet you. And I'm looking forward to hearing how we can explore and expand and empower your audience. Yes, yes. Different it, ideas towards bone health. Well, that's what I, I love. And that's different sort of approaches. Part. Yeah, exactly. So why don't we just get started? I love to hear your path and how you got to what you do today and what guided you into working with energy and alternative ways to heal and be well. As always, there are many people that come to energy through their own stories of illness. And I would be one of those people. So I was traveling one day. So my life changed abruptly in 1994. I was traveling to work one day and work was the university. I was going to a university where I taught physical therapy. I was, it was like a dream job. I loved working at the university and teaching physical therapy. So I love students. It was great. And I was in the heart of the think field. It was just wonderful. And as I was driving to work, I started getting a blind spot in my right eye, like a sunspot. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger and I couldn't shake it. That when I finally got to the university, which was about an hour away, I couldn't see out of my right eye. Yeah, that was a, a rude awakening. And as I went, I was very lucky. I was, the university I was working at was attached to a medical center and I was able to get immediate care. And at that point, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I was faculty teaching wow. at uh, the university and I was teaching clinical medicine Margie I was teaching clinical medicine so I was teaching multiple sclerosis oh how and then crazy I, yeah I know is that crazy and I get multiple sclerosis and now what I taught to my students was not acceptable for me it was not acceptable for me that path that I was describing in what sense just why don't you elaborate a little bit well, what, that, what wasn't it, acceptable the, the medications were not acceptable to, acceptable to me. The pathway of it, it progressing, is it constant? Is it going to be exacerbating, remitting? Or all the different descriptions that I would give to the students, back on the nerves. I was, I was not going to go in that direction in my mind, especially taking the medicine, which I knew was experimental. 
I didn't want to be a, an experiment, I guess, at that point. So I decided I had to really discover another path. And, and um, someone gave me the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And I opened up that book, and you're going to laugh. I opened up the book and I said, well, I'm going to try this. People say this has been helping. And I opened up the book and I looked at, and here it is, you know, I have to have it here. I love <laughs> that I book. Opened, <laughs> I know, I love it too. And she, she was amazing. She uh, really put together some good stuff and started us on a different journey. And in the er, you know, mid nineties, that thoughts would affect your health was not known at all. Today Absolutely. we know that and it's powerful and medicine, doctors, everyone, we're all into that now, understanding that. But she wrote in this book, multiple sclerosis, mental hardness. So she'll give you the psychological causes of multiple sclerosis and then give you an affirmation to go with it. So she wrote mental hardness, hard heartedness, iron will, inflexibility, and fear causes multiple sclerosis. So do you know what I did at that point? What? I threw the book away. <laughs> it was not part of my paradigm. I'm like, this, she doesn't know what she's talking about. This is all, I don't know what, you know, I was in science, I was teaching, and then this wasn't the type of philosophy or thinking that I was accustomed to in the scientific approach. So I threw the book away. Wow. <laughs> and you know what I thought at that moment? I, I had a moment where I thought, wow, that was pretty mentally hard. I didn't give the book a chance. I also thought, she said, hard heartedness. At first I said, I'm not hard hearted. I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I did throw that book away. She had said, iron will. Well, when I threw the book away, I said, I'm right. She's wrong. <laughs> okay. Inflexibility, that goes without saying. I threw the book away. I wasn't flexible with that thinking at all. And then fear. Of course, fear is a driver for all of us. And it's a driver for what we're going to be speaking about today. And then for those who really want to know what her affirmation was for that was, by choosing loving, joyous thoughts, I create a loving, joyous world. I am safe and free. And that became one of my mantras. And what I did for myself at the time was I put what was happening in my body, what was wrong, I put a positive affirmation to it and I listened to it 24 seven. And I, I would repeat the affirmations three times, Margie, and I would uh, repeat the, the affirmation. I look at life with love and joy because I would do my eye. I say, what's wrong with my eye? My eye, I'm not seeing. So I want to look at life with love and joy. And when she talked about the eye, it was, you don't like what you're looking at. So I said, well, that's true. I had two small children at home and I was driving an hour away to work one direction. My husband was driving an hour away to work the other direction. And we had somebody else raising our children. And I thought that that was a good idea. But spiritually, I didn't understand what it was like spiritually to have children and what that meant. I didn't know I would really want to be with them. I was moving on my path. I mean, that's understandable at that point. But I was moving on the path to, I was loving my career. But spiritually, there was something pulling at me. And I didn't like the life I was looking at. So the affirmation, I look at life with love and joy, I feel safe and free. And so I put these to music. So the music was afternoon of one. Da, 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 da. So you can imagine, <laughs> I look at life with love and joy. I feel safe and free. I look at life with love and joy. I feel safe and free. Anyway, I look at life with love and joy. You know. So anyways, I, I went <laughs> on and on with the different affirmations as I was driving to work. And I listened to these affirmations 24-7. And lo and behold, I was getting better. Wow. It was a paradigm for me that I had never had before in their approach. I was energetically changing. And what was this thing called thoughts? These, these refined energy called thoughts that was changing me. And my body was feeling better. I was feeling better. I was feeling more empowered. And that was not something that I had encountered in the work environment or in the way we approached healthcare. Right, medicine. especially in physical therapy school, that, that was never something no, that not even we addressed. learned. Yeah, not even addressed. 
And so I felt almost cheated because I felt, wow, my body is an energetic being and things are changing and I don't know why. So that was my only research question was why. So then I started going into the energy field and started exploring the energy areas. And it was Reiki where I first felt energy move. And I'm like, oh my goodness, energy really moves. And I, you know, I almost felt cheated, like all these years of studying and you know, I mean, we do have an energy system. And I never had learned that. So I started then learning the energy system. And from there, I came to an approach called emotional transformation, uh, emotrans. And that helped me to actually flow my own body's energy. And once I flowed my body's energy, I thought, maybe I don't have this anymore. And that's how I got more and more into the energy world and why I look at things very differently work when I'm working with clients and patients. Now I know that the body is speaking to us, is guiding us, and there's an energy flow that can help us towards our healing in many oh, different ways. What, what a fabulous story. And what happened with the MS? Well, I feel I don't. And now when I get to this other technique, which I'll share with you, is I felt that once I could understand the flow of my own body's energy, I didn't have it anymore. Oh, great. So you've been because in right. Yeah. I, feel, I feel that way. But I did go to the doctor. I, I mean, I have my, my couple of doctors. And one of the ones that I went back to, I said, I, I don't know. I think I don't have this. And he says, no, I still would recommend you taking medication. But <sighs> I'll tell you one thing, he said, you're like a fine wine. You're getting better with time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. I just yes, I loved it too. And as I would say, you know, our medicine is facing this paradigm. And I think many of us as healthcare clinicians and, and doctors and different practitioners are coming to this world of understanding how to better approach healthcare through understanding the way thoughts affect our bodies. Oh, and I so. Do, yeah. And that we do have an energy system. Yeah. No, I so agree. I mean, Around 35 years ago, when I was working in an outpatient clinic with chronic pain, a similar situation where everybody was miserable and depressed and just so unhappy and just negative thoughts were swarming. And I realized that I had gone through a bad situation, but I had people had asked me, you're so happy. And so I decided I was going to teach them some of the happiness things and some of the things to really change the negative thoughts. And I couldn't get over it the yeah. energy and the thoughts and how powerful they are. So it's something I've also been doing for a very long time. So I, I love what you're saying. So why don't we start with, why don't we go to bone health now? And so from your point of view, what are the key drivers and how can we use this for, to help our bones? I think that's, that's a great question because now if we look at what I found with Louise Hay and multiple sclerosis, how could I be more flexible in my life? And she said, multiple sclerosis was inflexible, then how can I be more flexible? You know, she, and then I looked at, when I looked at the eye and I had lost sight of my right eye, which has returned, it said that I didn't like the life I was looking at. So then how can I look better at my life and not be fearful? So let's, and bone health becomes another situation when we're looking at what do bones mean? And, and from a, a psychological point of view or a metaphysical point of view, what do bones mean. So bones are, are strong. Bones support the body. So if we're having issues with our bones, where do you feel lack of support? Where do you feel lack of support? Is there constant anxiety in your life? Is there a flow of fear in your life? Bones are all about moving into the direction of, of what you love. It's there to support you to create your life. But what if you have a lack of determination? Will you then result in sitting more and not moving as much, fearful, um, taking less deep breaths? We know when we're anxious and under stress, we do not breathe deeply and the body relies on that oxygen flow. So those are different things. So we need to think about what do the bones do for us? And even though it sounds crazy, if we're anxious, if we don't feel lack of determination, if we don't have purpose in our lives, how does that influence bone health? And yet at the same time, the positive thing is 
one, one of my tremendous beliefs is um, God created a system that could heal itself through the very source that created it. So anything that we create, we can uncreate. And that's also a very much a Louise Hay approach. So at the same time, when we're talking about anxiety, we're talking about lack of determination. When we're talking about bones are strong, where do we feel weak? Where do we feel unsupported? Those are the questions we want to answer in our lives to create better bone health from a thinking perspective. And from a perspective that we look at, you know, creating more metaphysical approach to our healing and to bone health. How does that sound to you, Margie? Oh, I love that. And the thing is, the truth is also they've measured this. They've measured, they've shown that stress reduces the osteoblast, the bone building cells, and that happiness and people who are content with their life have increased bone density. So that when they study this, they've even shown that it, it, it's true in terms of, but I've seen this also that people need, it's not just taking care of your bones in terms of what exercises you're doing, what supplements and what nutri you know, your nutrition, which is all important, but this other area is so critical. And I know that you've seen it in your life and you use that with your patient and I've seen that as well. And that's what I'm so happy that you're here to enlighten our listeners to this because this is something we can't, you can't just throw, you can't just sort of hide it under the table. You need to deal with it and see. And your story is incredible how you healed the MS. That's just a really a remarkable story and that you've been using this with your patients and seeing such good results. So Yes, I, and I have, right. And I just want to add to that how thoughts become things from Michael Dooley's approach, choose the good ones. And when I was healing from, let's say, multiple sclerosis, I want to stress that I didn't start with diet. I didn't start with exercise. I started with changing the way I thought. And once I had a physical feeling towards that change, once I had a change in thinking, my whole world changed. So you can change your life by changing your mind, I know that's a statement that's out there and said a lot, but it is absolutely true. And for me, it was the first step. A lot of people you'll find say, will tell you, I changed my life by changing my diet. That's not so with me. But because I felt better, because I changed my thinking, I naturally wanted to eat better. I wanted to eat more nutritiously. And that means eating things that are alive, plants. Um, not eating things that are in packages. I felt better. I wanted to embrace what the earth had to offer me. So naturally, I flowed to better eating, which was also what made me even feel more alive and better. So I just wanted to stress that. So if you, don't you think that's a good point to stress? I do, that? I do, because some people may think, okay, well, I did this, 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 and then I started thinking better. But the fact that you started with the thoughts and then that sort of was a cascade that led you onto all these other positive habits. And that's, that's what I've seen as well. I've seen, um, especially, you know, when I was dealing with chronic pain and people were just so unhappy when they started changing their thoughts, all of a sudden one thing led to the next and joy returned and purpose and their conditions, all of a sudden neck pain's getting better and back pain. And it was quite miraculous. And so, uh, uh, yeah. yes. And I believe our consciousness has an empower, a, an, a powerful ability to heal and yeah. also to help heal others, you know, just by positive thinking and bringing a positive way into the world. But and to it's, answer, yeah, yeah. And to answer, but just to finish, to answer that first question, what do I feel a key drivers to bone health is then empowered thinking by one's inner listener. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, that's Purposeful great. movement and nutrition. And what do I mean by purposeful movement is spiritual movement, purposeful movement, and not movement. And not, of course, spiritual movement, people think of yoga. People think of uh, uh, Tai Chi. But I'm thinking of when I say spiritual movement, purposeful movement, I'm jogging. And I'm, mantra, I'm in a mantra. That's a spiritual movement. I'm stretching and I'm in the moment. That's a spiritual movement. I stop and I feel what it felt like to stretch. So for a moment, what I want you to do is reach way up to the ceiling, Margie, just take your hand. Up, 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 up. Oh, and back, 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 back and feel that lovely stretch. Now I want you to bring your arm down. 
What's the after movement? What do you feel in your body? Just relaxation. And warmth. Openness, a, yeah. Yeah, warmth and openness. There's a spiritual movement happening. Without you even knowing, with every beautiful moment, movement, there's a flow of energy through your body. Oh, that's Cleansing, great. Moving, clearing. And all we did was lift our arms and stretch. I love that. The two of us. So well, I don't physical yeah. movement. That's great. And what about, you talk about flow. You've mentioned that several times. So what, what do you mean when you say flow versus resistance in our energy field? And how do, what does that have to do with our bones? Okay, that is, to me, it's, it's optimal. Because as I say, I truly, truly believe that our inner guide, our inner, inner empowered listener can guide us to, to many, many different things. And becoming, coming into the understanding of flow versus resistance, for me, was vital to my healing, was vital to me feeling empowered that I can be healthy and not afraid of my body. Because one of my foundations of my inner awareness method is that the body is loving you into existence, not out of it. At all times, your body is loving you into existence and not out of it. And that is a, a paradigm shift for many people because many people are afraid of their bodies. What is my body gonna do to me? But the body at all times is giving you messages of love and it does that through flow and resistance. So let me just step back and, and ask you a question. And we're going to start with getting to connect with that inner guide. And then from there, do a practice of flow versus resistance. Oh, great. We'll speak more about how that affects your bones. Great. So now, when you're, we're going to go towards now your inner guide. And let's let that be our driver. So when you're um, moving around the house or driving, do you have like a lot of little words going on in your head do you are you listening to yourself talk sometimes i do a, i mean i do so many practices to quiet my mind now but yes of course yes. there's certain you, times you're listening yeah. to yourself you gotta go do a b c d and this is right that, that's going on now that means some your brain is talking there's talking going on right yes and then there's a listener who's actually listening to it correct true true so are there two of you it could there's be, a, yeah. <laughs> and there's a listener. Yeah, and then it almost feels like there's two of us. But in my experience, there's one. There's the listener. The listener can shut that talker off at any time. But as soon as we put things into the brain and into the synapses, it goes round and around and around. And so big that it can actually only become an entity of itself and make us feel that there is no listener, that we're not in charge, but we are. And at any point, we can say, stop, what's my next thought? So for example, if you're doing the alphabet one, two, three, or counting one, two, three, four, or doing A, B, C, D, you can at any point start the alphabet and go, what's my next thought? And there's nothing. Practice that. Say the alphabet in your mind, we're gonna pause for a second. Say the alphabet silently to yourself. Go, what's my next thought? and tell me what you experience. Okay, let's try that. So you interrupt with what's my next thought? Hey, what's my next thought? And what do you feel? Sort of an empty, emptiness, emptiness which is great. Right. Yes. Because the brain, you're the listener is driving the brain. But what happens to us is we let our thinking drive us but now you're the driver at any point you can tell the brain to stop you can do you can say what's my next thought nothing will be there what a great pattern interrupt i love that the pattern interrupt yeah and one of the things that i love to tell my clients is when you have that space that's the space where god can enter that's the space where creativity can enter source whatever you call that universal life force, that's that space where that can enter. And then you become the driver uh, as the listener. Then you now are in your spirit, which is more in this area around your heart. And you can observe the head and you can observe the thinking. 
and you can drive that thing. Okay, so that's really part of getting connecting to that inner, inner source of who you are and being that inner guide. Now let's take that to the next level. All right, so let's say that something has disturbed you. We won't go th through physical pain. We could use a variety of different things. Physical pain is something that hurts, but not many people listening may have something, a physical pain. But we can all stir up an emotional pain. So we're gonna go to a second activity where now we stir up an emotional pain, and you don't have to tell me what it is, but something, maybe an anger, but something that we wanna get an energy to arise in you, all right? So I want your listeners and yourself to now think of something that has upset you something that has upset you and try and bring it up to find something that, that bothers you or something you were angry at just recently. Do you have it? Yes. Okay, terrific. Now I'm gonna ask you, where do you feel that in your body? Show me with your hands. Okay, it's in your stomach. Right. You're showing that and maybe some of the listeners may feel it in their chest or their heads, but now you have just quote, kind of diagnosed yourself where the energy injury may be to your energy system. And you can say, soften, soften and flow, soften. And take a deep breath and just focus on that energy and ask the energy to soften, soften and flow. If, and stay curious, if that energy could leave, where would it want to go? Soften, soften and flow. So now, where you, let's say your energy was a 10 and when it goes down, it gets better. What is your energy now that's in your stomach? It's gone completely. You, it's gone completely. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, yeah. some of the listeners may not have that immediate release, but you flowed your own body's energy. There was resistance. You identified the resistance. You didn't react to it. And then you asked the energy to flow, soften and flow, and then you had flow through your body. This we can all do. Did you know you could always do that? I, I, I enjoy, do I know that I can do that? I, yes, because I've, I, I agree with you in terms of, in terms of really appreciating when you, when something, where is it manifesting? So I've sort of been doing a different, different Type practice, of similar, right? But most people have no clue that we're almost happy for the discomfort because that we can pinpoint it and then we can, we can Release. make an impact in on, yeah. Right now, but I'd like the listeners now to understand, Margie, that that resistance, many times we are running away from it. And we're going, oh my goodness, this, this has brought up an emotion in me. And I, it, it's this resistance I feel in my body. How can I get away from it? And I just want them to know that running away from it is actually what's hurting your bones because you're not physically running, which is good for the bones. <laughs> you're not physically running. You are creating stress by oppressing that resistance. And that affects us to the our bones it affects us to the very core and bones of us so by identifying it it's actually helping to restore and offer movement in the body and identifying that resistance and saying soften soften and flow and allowing the flow to happen and now the other point i'd like to make for you margie is go back to that energy when you felt the resistance in your stomach Remember that resistance. Think of the thing that had upset you or made you angry and it rose some resistance and there may be a little bit there left now that you think of it again, right? If that energy had a message for you, what would it be? That energy, it's only energy. That's all it is. But part of your thinking, it's your thought that created the energy. Yes, we said think of something. Absolutely. And it created an energy. So now, what is the message that energy has to give you? Does it have a message for you? Think of the energy that was there. What is its message? Well, for me, what the message was? Yes. Um, it was to let it go. It was something that had happened to not hold on to it and just let it go. 
Yes. So the message is let it go. Don't hold on to it. And the body is speaking to you. The body gave you a message. Yes, you're processing this resistance, but the resistance is not all that bad. What I really want you to know is you're in a challenging situation and now let it go. We can do this together. The body is your GPS system in life, asking for you to release, asking for you to let go and to flow, but to also get the message. So the resistance is a point of learning and we need, to, we need challenges to grow. And that's part of what this is, is looking at our challenges and looking at them as a point of growth, as opposed to keeping them locked inside, creating inner stress. Then our bones feel they have to, you can't breathe, you can't move, you're under stress. Oh, and the body wants to take a deep breath. It wants to move and it wants to stretch. And it wants you to understand we're practicing letting go. And maybe that's your journey in life, Margie. Margie, it's to let go. Maybe you're practicing all throughout this lifespan to let go and to surrender whatever to a higher power. I don't know. But your body is, const is your GPS. It's guiding you into that space. These resistances and flow are all about guiding you as a GPS system in life. So for example, I, how is your body this GPS system? Well, you, let's, let's think of a GPS, the old, old GPS systems. As you're driving along, you're going, and it's, there's flow. Everything's good. And all of a sudden, you make a turn, a wrong turn, and it goes, recalculating, recalculating, recal and there's this resistance rising up. And you can probably even do it while you, but there's resistance in your body, that recalculating thing of that GPS system. And then you turn back on the path, and all of a sudden, there's flow and you're in the right direction. And of course you go a little bit further and there's, you make a wrong turn, recalculating, recalculating, and there's more resistance. But my point is the GPS system says, you really have messed up your whole life. Go back to, to uh, where you live, where you started from and start all over again. It never does that. Whenever you turn into flow, you're back on the path. Whenever you finally said, I had this resistance, the message my body gave me was let go, let it flow. Huh, I got the message, I'm back on, on track. What a great practice. I think, I think it's a wonderful practice. And what I like so much, I think it's very important because so often people do not listen to their bodies. Even when they're exercising, you know, there's 10 different TVs on and there's, there's all things going on and we can be so distracted that we're not living in the moment. And then we're certainly not listening to our body, but something as powerful is just tuning in. And if we have, if we're feeling a thought comes up and we feel it somewhere, then we, we are getting information that we can act on. And, but I like your technique, just soften, soften and flow. That's beautiful and easy to do. It's something that everybody can do, but yet very, very powerful. Yeah, and Michael Singer uses the terms relax and release. So some of what he has, his book, The Untethered Soul, is very good. And yeah. flow comes from Sylvia Hartman's work on emotrans. And it's in my book. I describe the technique in my book called Stress Fish Guide to Emotrans. But one thing I wanted to point to you about exercise. Exercise is so important. But I'm talking about spiritual exercise, purposeful exercise. And I would like to make an exercise movement, <laughs> spiritual exercise movement to all our listeners. When you are exercising, what are you thinking about? Because thoughts do become things. For example, I, for myself, the other day I was exercising, I was, I was jogging, and I try to do mantras when I jog so that I keep my mind clear and flow. It's not a time to process what's going wrong in your life. It's not a time to process problems because you will end up with certain, I, I, don't want to predict that, but I've had certain injuries end up happening because I was in a stressful thinking process while exercising. But for example, if I, to continue my story the other day, now what I do is my knee started to hurt as I ran. And my first thought was after I felt the knee pain was, oh, what was my last thought? I feel knee, knee pain. What was my last thought? My last thought was I started focusing on what I needed to do my, for my family and some stuff that was going on. And I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. My body caught me. 
My body loved me into existence. It said, don't think like that. That thinking is not going to restore you or bring you to your greater purpose in life. That type of thinking is going to break down what you want. So I went back to my mantra. I thanked my knee. <laughs> right, because that's important. It's important to thank, thank you for the, the, for, the, for the signals that you're getting so that you can act on them. And we forget that our body is an incredible intelligence system, just incredible. And I see, think that every cell holds the face of God. Every part of you is, a, is that image and likeness or however one sees source or however one sees the universal life force is in the mitochondria. However you see that to be. And if that's so, you know, when you eat a piece of bread, you know, you're not saying to your, 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 your digestive cells that release hydrochloric acid. <laughs> they know what to do. And at this moment we're talking, are, are, you know, 10 million red blood cells were formed to help our bodies restore our bones. So our bodies are remarkable, but we have to recognize the gift we have been given in our thinking and start, stop abusing that gift and allowing it to run away with ourselves, which I, yeah. I have to say I do. <laughs> My I, I, think, I think everybody has a tendency to do that. And we I think the other thing is we have a tendency to totally ignore our bodies. We're not even thinking, I, I, this is what I see all the time. People are told they have osteoporosis, they have to exercise, and they're dreading it. They're like, I'm only doing this because it has to help my bones, which are weak. So it's negative, 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 negative. And that's certainly not the thoughts that we want to really enhance healing. So I, I see this on a regular basis. So I think your message is just so wonderful and really can help all of us because that's the tendency for a lot of people to just, so I think also people, should enjoy what they're doing. You know, if that exercise is giving you such negative thoughts, then find something else. There's a million ways to achieve what you're trying to accomplish. And certainly if one's, you're just doing it just to get it done and because you have to. That's right. And so I'm giving a lot of you permission. I feel like <laughs> to exercise today. But what I am telling you today is find spiritual movement. I find when I'm exercising now, that I feel like I'm covering two things at once. I'm covering my spiritual nature, a form of prayer, a form of meditation, a form of guidance within myself while I'm moving, while I'm giving myself purposeful movement, stretching. Again, reach up into the heavens with both hands and feel that stretch. It feels amazing, right? right. And, just and then bring... back down and feel the, the after feeling of that, that there is something happening in your body that's more than just moving. There was an energy flow within you that came with that simple movement of a stretch. So and that's so important for your bones. How you think is very, very important to your bones. And I don't even want to say positive thinking versus negative thinking. Because if you're thinking, trying to think positive, what I found, that means there's a negative and you're running away from the negative. What I would like to see is a way of life where you start coming into yourself and into your inner listener and start spending time with yourself. Because yes, there is a great guide going on and it could be right inside of you. Because we come to this knowledge, uh, this, we're in this era of incredible knowledge and we're moving out of this, we're overwhelmed by knowledge and we're moving into an era of know-how. And this is the era you possess the knowledge within yourself. Start listening to you and your inner know-how. Spend time. Take a deep breath. Where do you feel resistance is in your body? Soften and flow. Stay curious or in wonder. See if there's a message for you to be had. Get advice from yourself. Listen, write yourself a question. And it may guide you to these very, very wonderful areas of increased health, increased bone strength, and increased just overall love of your life. Which is, so, so, which is just so important. What is just so, so, so important. So, you know, we have some of those exercises and I'll just wanna, you know, give the listeners maybe two more 
Oh, great. Sure. Exercises to do know-how, know-how. So again, for bone health, your mornings are going to be so important. Yes, it's good to get sleep because it restores our bones. It restores our life. But when you get up in the morning to greet the morning and to be thankful for your day, that sends again a wave through your body. Even if we spent right now, and I'm going to send some gratitude energy to your listeners just in this moment. I'm going to send a wave of gratitude. And take a deep breath. And did you feel a sense of energy come for you at that moment? You know, the funny thing is I'm a big energy person and I felt so much energy. I had my hands tingling. I, I, I really felt the energy. Okay, so, so that's, was, take yeah. that moment and we listen to it. There's energy flowing for you and to you and through you. So gratitude is the first thing when you wake up in the morning. And then get out of bed for a moment and stretch. And feel the stretch. Just spend time with your body moving up and around and then take down and feel that after feeling and that the energy coming into your body. What is that flow? And if there is resistance getting out of bed, acknowledge it. Don't be angry at it. Don't avoid it. Embrace it. Take a deep breath and just say five, four, three, two, one, or three, two, one, up I am and get up out of bed. Stand up and take a moment to stretch and then take that nice glass of water nourish that body nourishes the brain because i'm you know some of that brain fog could just be due to not have dehydration maybe you some you forget that maybe part of not wanting to get out of bed could just be dehydration and getting that wonderful glass of water of course a cold shower is always a good idea but we won't go there with our listeners but um <laughs> Those, that morning routine is wonderful. And if you get outside when you go to work or whatever, stand on Mother Earth, lift those arms to the heavens and stretch and say, day, I receive thee. I'm ready for your lessons. And then as you reach down, bring that energy into your body and take a deep breath. And you're ready for the energies. Your bones are ready. Your bones felt When you reached up, now you're doing things that your bones love. You're receiving, you're standing on the earth, you're weight bearing, all the things that make your bones very, very happy. And in the evenings, when you do get back home and it is in the night and the light has fallen from the day and the darkness has arisen, go out and stand with Mother Earth one more time or from your window if it need be, and raise those arms up and say, I give back to the endless night all that my challenges of this day. I return it into the endless night and let go. Where do you feel the resistances in your body? Soften and flow and give it back to the endless night. Your day is done. And then, Find the sleep and find the rest by giving back to the endless night. It can take all those issues. It can take all those problems. What a fabulous practice. That night one, that is incredible. Give it all back up into the endless night. And so, because so often we keep things with us into sleep and into the night. So when we give it up. And into the infinite night, into the infinite darkness. That's beautiful. It can handle all of that. Oh, so I'd love to hear from the listeners if you do that and it helps your sleep because I think that it's not something I practice that particular, that I love that though. And I think that could have such positive benefits. That's great. What a great practice. Thank you. For right. that. It's all great. It's all really wonderful. Good, and good. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think there's, welcome, we have Marty. some really good techniques that we can put into use. And I think, and I see this as a physical therapist working with people with with osteoporosis and bone health, how critical this piece is. So what you're saying really does work and really does make a difference. And I've seen changes when people have incorporated these ideas into their lives. So it's very, very powerful. Don't underestimate how uh, really the power of this. Yes. 
a simple practice. And to remind all of you who are listening, you're the one you're looking for. Ultimately, you're the one you are looking for. Your body is loving you into existence, not out of it. And as you look at things that are disturbing you about your body, think of how the body is really trying to touch you and bring you towards your greater life. That's you know, beautiful. And I think yeah. so often we get so annoyed with our body. and Can it only be like this? Or why do I have this pain? But it's, it's really looking at it from a different perspective. And I think that if we can look at it that way and use the mantras and use some of the things that you've taught us, it can, it can get, teach us so much that we can just improve our life and, and really help every aspect of our health and well-being. So Yes. And to yeah. remember, yoga is not the only spiritual form of movement. Every move you make could be. Every move you make. So try to make purposeful movements. And remember, your body is loving you into existence. So, and, and just another example, if your shoulder hurts, do you have the weight of the world on your shoulders? Is there a pain in the neck? Who is the pain in the neck? And start to resolve <laughs> some of these things that your body's trying to help you through. It's not doing things to you, but for you, for your greater life to guide you, to help you, and find that inner, inner listener and, that, and try to interrupt the pattern the brain falls into in its efforts to keep you safe. You know, it's just, it's a survival mechanism. You can break that up easily by saying, what's my next thought? Yeah, and I love the alphabet too. That's a great yeah, way to begin. So you just... Go into it. So many great little things that we can add to our life. I love it. And I think the interesting thing is that both the two of us are physical therapists. So we see, yeah, it's fun. We, see we come from a different perspective and we see the physical manifestations of this. So it's really so great that we're both on the same wavelength, how important this is now, vital this is. So for those of you who haven't really been thinking like this, try these techniques and just see what happens because it's really miraculous, I believe. And I think it's a very important piece really to just our whole well-being and our bones as well. So, and, you know, just to that point, you know, just another quick story would be, I would have a patient and now I'm, I know to ask, Oh, you're having shoulder issues. What happened just before that? What happened just before those? Shows? Oh, a lot of difficult things within my family. And I'm trying to help this child and I'm trying to help that. And then my husband's having issues and this, and, and, and I said to her, well, now that you have a shoulder issue, did you say to yourself, well, I'm just going to have to let all those issues go about my family. I'm going to have to step back, take care of myself and start taking care of my shoulder. And then everything will be better. And, I, and she said, yes, that's exactly what I said. I said, I can't worry about them. I have to take care of my shoulder problem. I said, your body loved you into existence. It called you back to yourself. What you thought was a problem was actually a gift. Yeah. And, and now think, you're here getting away from all those issues, that thinking, and you couldn't control what was happening. So your body taught you, come back to yourself. That's great. And I believe that, that in our challenges, there are always gifts, silver lining. So that's, that was a beautiful way to put it. So we could go on and on. I love we talking talk to on you. And on because it's it's so we, wonderful and so helpful. Right. How can people get in touch with you and learn more about all this great work that you're doing, Terry? Well, they can go to my website, www.terrylynchcoaching.com. Okay, And that's great. Terry with a Y, not an I. It's a Y. All, all Ys. So terrylynchcoaching.com. And there, uh, they can also ask for my book. And if they sign up for, I'm offering half-price sessions. My sessions are normally $150. But for those who listen to your podcast and put Margie <laughs> <laughs> on their when they sign up, the contact says, I just was listening to Margie. Uh, you, I will, uh, we'll have, we can have a half price session. Oh, that's and very, very generous. And, I will, and we'll send the, the book to them in the mail. Oh, isn't that a wonderful. copy, a signed copy of my book. Oh, just this guide to email trans, which describes some of the techniques we did today. Oh, that is so great. So what I'll have, I'll have all this in the show notes. I'll also have the link to your book. And I guess that's on your website as well. And this has been great. I've so enjoyed this. I'm going to do the night. That's a new one for me. I love that. 
and give it up to the night. <laughs> That's right. Just give it up to that endless night and stretch into it and feel it all go. It's the one most wonderful thing I do is I just love the sense of, of the flow of energy in and out of my body. Remember, everybody, practice resistance versus flow, please. That is such a gift to us. And our thinking can create resistance and our body will offer the flow. And our thinking can also create flow. And to remember that point, thinking does affect your body. Thoughts affect your body. But also movement, your body can affect your thoughts. So it works two ways. And maybe that we can carry that can carry with everybody today. What what a great yeah. way to end! I can't thank you enough. I'm so glad we met each other at the course because this has been just invaluable. Yeah, a lot of fun, Marty. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm looking so forward, much. and we'll we'll catch up again too. We yes, yes. I'm looking talking. forward to staying in touch. And thank right. you so much for sharing all this great knowledge and all these great techniques right. with everybody. And the listeners, if they have any questions for me, they can also go to my contact section on the website and get in touch with me. Oh, great. And Thank they can you. also ask you, and then you can call me. <laughs> again. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Happy Bones, Happy Life podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please subscribe on your favorite listening app so that you don't miss any amazing insights on upcoming episodes. And until next time, continue to live your best life ever. See you soon.